the agricultural community, disagreements with some environmentalists on topics such as GMO crops are nothing new. This week, Stuart Brand, a self-proclaimed environmentalist, spoke on UNL's East Campus as a speaker in the Huberman Lecture Series. Brand is the founder of the Whole Earth Catalog and now works with the Long Now Foundation, working to make long-term thinking commonplace. We talked with Brand before his lecture about GMOs and biotechnology, but started by asking about being green while maximizing yield. I think maximizing yield is uh, maximally green in the, if you can thereby leave more and more of the natural landscape natural. I mean, at present, farming is the most, is the hugest event that humans do to the landscape. About 40% of the ice-free land of the world is one form or another of agriculture. If we can get more food from less of that, then a lot more of it can be forest and tall grass plains and all the rest of that good stuff, which is, by the way, uh, fixes a lot of carbon and is good for the climate. Is there a misconception about that? Do some people think the more you ramp it up, the more you're affecting the environment? It all depends on what comes out of the fields. You know, if you've got a lot of extra fertilizer going into the river that kills downstream, that's no good. Um, if you're losing a lot of the soil, mm -hmm. that's no good. Um, but I think one of the realizations that's going on in this century for science-based environmentalists is we're realizing it's all gardening. Um, there are no pristine wildernesses left anywhere, except maybe Antarctica. And uh, we are responsible for maintaining the stuff that's there, for restoring the stuff that we can restore. Genetically engineered orga organisms is something you've changed your stance on. You used to think it was not so good? Um, <clears throat> No, because of my biology background, I was there when molecular biology was really getting started. And so, you know, it was recombinant DNA and gene splicing and all that way back in the 70s. And I just thought it was pretty much okay. Um, the thing I've changed my mind on is nuclear. I used to be against it, and now I'm for it for climate reasons. Um, but what surprised me was how irrational some of my fellow environmentalists had become against GMOs. I think it's kind of superstitious, frankly, that they think there's something deeply against nature to take a gene from one species and put it in another species. Why the speed of the, the biotechnology emergence now? Is it because there's more technology available everywhere else? Is it because of the massive population that we're seeing? The main event is that Biotechnology speeds itself kind of the way computer technology does. Every advance makes the tools themselves go faster. And the people who are watching the rate of these things, the ability to sequence and write genetic code is increasing at a rate several times faster than Moore's Law, than the, the rate of increase in computers. Um, now, we don't all communicate with genes, and we do all communicate with computers, so mm -hmm. we don't feel it as much. But in terms of uh, technological revolutions, biotech in this decade and in this century is going to be one revolution after another, which is going to be pretty interesting in a kind of a conservative field like farming. What, uh, can, uh, what can farmers here do, and anywhere, do to <coughs> better sustain the planet? And at the same time, they're obviously thinking about how to you know, increase their bottom line as well. The main thing I see as an ecologist is anything that reduces um, widespread use of pesticides is good. It's good for the farmers and the farm workers because it's lousy for people. As far as the plants are concerned, we're just another pest <laughs> and a large one. Um, and they last a long time and, and, and. Herbicides I'm not frankly as concerned about. Uh, things that, you know, the Various forms of no-till farming, like we're getting with the herbicide-tolerant uh, soybeans, where you can just leave the, the plants in the ground and inject a fresh set of uh, seeds next year and a little bit of uh, fertilizer, and you're off and running. You don't have to plow. It's better for the soil. It's way better for the atmosphere because it turns out that plowing not only costs a lot of energy to do, but it turns up a, a lot of um, Gases come fuming out of the soil when you tear it up like that. Brand's latest book is Whole Earth Discipline. To hear him speaking at UNL, log on to hewermanlectures.unl.edu.